بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Under the patronage of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, Your Royal Highness, the Prince Andrew, Duke of York and founder of Pechat Palace Global. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, a very good evening and welcome to Pechat Palace Bahrain 2.0. Representing Tim Keen, my name is Safa Abdel Khaliq and it's my honor and privilege to host and welcome you all to the second edition of Pechat Palace Bahrain under the theme Innovation and Technology. Last year, we hosted the Pichat Palace Bahrain, and today we are very proud that the event has evolved to recognize the global potential of Bahraini entrepreneurs who represent the foundations of the new economy, driven by ideas and visions that would shape a better tomorrow. Your presence, ladies and gentlemen, here today underscores the success of this key initiative and the significant role that Pichat Palace plays in bolstering the spirit of entrepreneurship. Partnering with the office of His Royal Highness, the Duke of York, has provided a unique experience in supporting budding and seasoned entrepreneurs in materializing their concept. Given the theme, the Pichat Palace is a testament to Bahrain's commitment to develop a generation of national ready individuals to embrace the fourth industrial revolution and gear up for the global and international challenges. Before introducing the speakers for this evening, we would like to encourage you to download the official Pichat Palace application, as this application will be playing a very critical role this evening in terms of your interaction with the competition and, of course, voting for the participants. I will definitely be elaborating on this process a bit later this evening. And with no further delay, please allow me to welcome on stage His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Chairman of Tim Keen, for his opening remarks. Your Royal Highness, the Duke of York, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to the second ed edition of Pichat Palace Bahrain. It's an honor and a privilege to be part of this annual event where entrepreneurs gather and, and uh, try, and hopefully we will be successful in helping them uh, match and, and grow their businesses. I would also start, uh, like to start by seizing this opportunity to, to extend our appreciation to His Royal Highness, the Duke of York, who founded the Pitchett Palace Global. Uh, it's an important initiative that has given entrepreneurs all around the world the ability to, uh, an, another ability to uh, grow their businesses and, and help connecting potential partners global influencers, mentors, uh, together. Entrepreneurs, as we all know, are the backbone of any innovative and diverse economy and an essential facilitator to sustainable human development. And in, indeed, Bahrain, we've taken many steps along the way uh, to, in this regard. And, and Tamkin has been one of the, if I may say, core pillars in Bahrain in helping uh, encouraging Bahraini entrepreneurs to uh, follow their dreams and aspirations. Our partnership with uh, Pitchett Palace Global has been a, and is a growing example uh, of this and, and we're very excited to see how we can take this and develop it uh, further. Before we invite participants to pitch their ideas, I'd like to um, share with you some of the thoughts that were ex sh the entrepreneurs shared during the boot camp uh, we had uh, a week ago. Uh, these are, uh, and, and the, the, the entrepreneurs have uh, great ideas and, and they need to continue to face them even in, in difficult times. So, Embracing the passion, but also keep your eyes open to suggestions. Identify what you know, 
but also understand that you may need help and, and, and uh, seek help when you can. Listen to ideas with an open mind and experiment on ways on how to improve your ideas. Rethink the details and refine your project as you move along to fulfill your dreams. And never be afraid to fail. Fail and accept and learn from the outcome. And be ready to commit long hours of hard work. Success will never come easy. So the, uh, once again, thank you for everyone for coming here and making this uh, a successful event. And uh, to all the entrepreneurs who've participated, as well as those who've made it here to the final stage, may I wish you the best of success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your inspiring words. I'm now extremely honored to welcome on stage His Royal Highness the Prince Andrew, Duke of York, founder of Pitchat Palace Global, for his keynote speech. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is an enormous pleasure to bring Pitchard Palace back to Bahrain for its second outing. My office, um, uh, as usual, have provided me with um, notes and speech to give to you, but I've thrown that out of the window. Because I just want to say a couple of things tonight that are subtly different. You will have seen on television, perhaps, a thing called Dragon's Den. And you will have also seen something called Shark Tank, um, which is an American version of the same thing. But has anybody ever thought how a shark thinks and how a shark operates? It's an individual. It doesn't actually take into consideration anybody else. Has anybody thought about what a dragon does? They're mythical beings. Pitchard Palace is neither a dragon nor a shark. I work on the very simple premise that if we all work together, we can actually, combined, make a difference for these businesses. So I like to see Pitchard Palace as a school of dolphins, because dolphins work together in order to have a positive outcome. Now, I go back to 2014, when we started Pitchard Palace, and it was an attempt to network new businesses with an audience. And what we discovered very quickly after doing the first two in 2014, that there was a requirement to do it more often, and we have done it in London or in the UK ever since twice a year. 
But we did two in 2014. Last year, we did 45 events around the world. That's not, as it were, important apart from a statistic. And if there are any more events, as an individual, I'm not going to get to them all. But I want to pick out, of those 45 events that we did last year, Bahrain. And I'll tell you why. One of the things that has surprised us is how it is that we are able to, as it were, offer our service in so many different markets and start up and scale up ecosystems. And I just want to use Bahrain as an example because our partnership with Tam Keen is absolutely key to how we do it. In most cases, m governments want to encourage starting businesses and scaling business. And Tam Keen is here set up in order to do that, as well as to increase the skills base of uh, Bahrainis come to Bahrain and set up a business that the skill ready for them to use. But it's beyond your borders that Tamkeen has some difficulty in being able to uh, activate on behalf of Bahraini businesses. And so working with us at Pitchett Palace, we're in a position to be able to go to other markets and introduce businesses that have started here into other parts of the world. And I suspect this evening, one or two of the businesses that you will hear this evening are looking for friends and influencers and connections to places not just in the local market, but more broadly. And we're excellently placed to be able to help that. But it's not just me. It's not just me and my office or my organization. It's all of you. And this is my point about a school of dolphins. Every single one of you sitting here this afternoon or this evening can make a significant difference to the outcomes of, for these businesses. Because as you listen to what these businesses' ideas are, what, they, um, what the problems are that they want to solve, how they're going to solve them, and particularly in the ask that they've got, you will come up with a serendipitous moment and go, I know exactly who they should be put in touch with. And make no mistake, you can all make a connection for these businesses just from uh, what you hear. Now, I also have spoken to all the entrepreneurs that are uh, pitching this evening and made it abundantly clear that the whole idea is to put them under pressure. Because if they are under pressure, then they will perform much better. And they are going to have to pitch uh, a three-minute pitch or longer or shorter on many occasions in the future. But they're always going to have to do it, um, as it were, in less intense environments than in front of us. So this evening, this is about them getting their story across to you because none of you really know what it is that they do. But all of you sitting in the audience this evening are absolutely the people who can make a difference. So, this is not about just sitting and listening. This is about taking notes, making connections, use the app to connect with the entrepreneurs and network with them afterwards. 
And I know, having already had a conversation with many of the entrepreneurs, that my office is already working with them in order to be able to help them, whatever the outcomes. Now, inevitably, there's going to have to be some choices made this evening, and the choices are made by you, the audience, and that's why we want you to vote for the one that you want to go forward into our global showcase event. Um, well, actually, no, first of all, to the GCC um, uh, event uh, later in October? November. See? Got to work out which month of the, of the year it is. And then on to uh, our uh, event that we hold every year um, in uh, London, showcasing the best of what we see around the world. So this evening, it's about you making a difference. It's about us working with Amkeen in a way to showcase great Bahraini ideas, great Bahraini businesses, and see if we can't make a huge difference to their growth and their outcomes. So have a really enjoyable evening, um, and we will uh, uh, see you uh, later on when, um, uh, after the voting, uh, when we've got to make some unenviable choices and, and, and tell you the results. So thank you all very much indeed for coming. And remember, we're working together as a school of dolphins in order to give these businesses the best start that we can. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. And I have to add by saying that, as mentioned by the keynote speakers, the importance of this key initiative cannot be understated by the Kingdom of Bahrain, for it provides the best and the brightest Bahraini talents with a platform to grow, to prosper, and an opportunity to make their dreams come true and to realize their ideas. As such, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to support this occasion. I urge you to support the event and support these entrepreneurs who are eagerly waiting to pitch in a bit. Today, as you have noticed, there are no judges because you will be judging. You will be selecting and deciding who will best represent Bahrain at Pitch at Palace Global, which is happening in London later this year. And you will be selecting tonight six top entrepreneurs who will be showcasing against regional businesses at Pitch at Palace GCC, which is also taking place in Bahrain later this year. Before introducing the pitches, I would like to go over a few notes that would help our proceedings for the day. With regards to the social media, we encourage you to share your experience here today with your network to highlight the different stories and the great exposures that you will be exposed to. You could do so by hashtagging hashtag Pitch at Palace, hashtag Pitch at Palace Bahrain. You have the hashtag handles in the lookbooks. You can also follow the Duke of York at HRH, the Duke of York, at Pitch at Palace Bahrain. For those of your friends and family who have not joined us tonight, you can, you, they can actually watch this live as they are live streamed on YouTube through the Duke of York's YouTube channel. You can vote by downloading the Pitch at Palace application in your local App Store or Google Play. Kindly note that an open Wi-Fi is available in the venue. Wi-Fi password is provided at the back of your badges. Once the app is downloaded, you can vote for up to three entrepreneurs each. And this app is designed to give you a greater connectivity with the entrepreneurs and a more personal engagement with the businesses. So once you have the app, you can discover, connect, and vote. Discover, so during the pitches, you can view entrepreneurs, contact them and mention them on any of the social media platforms. You can connect with them uh, via the app. You can also vote right after the pitches. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, before I introduce the pitching session, I would like to remind the participants that we are very strict on time, where each participant has no more than three minutes to pitch. The two gentlemen standing next to me are the buglers from the Ministry of Interior. Today, they will be the timekeepers for this evening. They will be signaling when the time is up. Could we please have a live demonstration of what happens when the three minutes are up, please?
thank you. So this sound signals that your time is up, where we request the contestants to make way for the next pitch. I would also like to wish the candidates every success in their innovative and entrepreneurial pursuit, and remember that making it to the top 12 finalists is a win in itself. So good luck to each one of you. And with no further ado, we will now start the pitching sessions with the 12 participants under seven different categories. For the first category, health, fitness, and medical technology, I would like to invite Dr. Nehla Sinni, representing DocWare. Good evening. My name is Nehla Sinni. If you are in a gathering or in an event and you find the one sitting next to you, doctor. So you'll start asking them questions related to the medical field. And this is what happened to me during the last nine years while I was studying and working in dentistry. I've received many calls, many questions from many people. Some are asking about the cost of some treatments and some are asking about a specific doctor. And Let's not forget those people who are looking to find the right doctor because they are really sick. And one day, my mom got sick, and the doctor told me she needs surgery. It took me three days to find the right doctor. I was searching online, asking all the people I know to find the right doctor for her. At that time, I had thought, why don't we have something that can help me and help everyone else to find the right doctor without wasting time? And here it is, DocWare, a platform that allows patients to search, book appointments with the doctors according to other patient reviews and rating, get second opinion, get live consultation, and when you get back home, you can get your medication delivered into your place. But there's something more. DocWare is not only for patients, it's for doctors too. It will allow the freshly graduated doctors to upload their CVs in order to find a job and it will improve doctor's skills by providing them with all the medical courses and conferences, which will potentially increase patient satisfaction. If we will talk about numbers, we have more than 350,000 doctors that receives more than 15 million patient visits annually in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia only. These figures show that it's a huge market with a high demand. With a high demand. We've developed a prototype with a small budget, and we gained more than 45 users and eight doctors within three days only. Imagine if you have more. Ladies and gentlemen, please close your eyes for one second and think of one of your family members. What if the one you're thinking about is sick? Would you want an app that helps you to find any of these services in less than a minute? If your answer is yes, Please, vote for us and support us, and we would like to meet Ms. Faiqa Saeed Al-Saleh, the, the Minister of Health in Bahrain, and Dr. Maryam Al-Jalahma, the CEO of Nahra. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nahra. Thank you, Dr. Nahra. Yes. Simple idea, yet with an enormous social value. Can you tell us? Where do you envision? Can, can you tell us where do you envision Dockware to be two years from now? Okay, so uh, our vision is to simplify, uh, our mission is to simplify and improve healthcare services. And we hope that we can reach all the countries in GCC and the MENA region in the few next years. Uh, we aim to have a 360 degree healthcare services in one application for the patients and for the doctors. So you have asked in your ask uh, to get connected to certain uh, key uh, individuals. Yes. If I gave you the opportunity to add on to your ask, what would it be? This is your chance. Oh. Okay, so I would like to ask for $80,000 to develop and operate a highly secured system uh, to accomplish our mission in simplifying and improving healthcare services. Thank you. Thank you Ladies so and gentlemen, for those of you who believe in Dr. Nehla's vision, please support her and get in touch with her after the event. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
For the second category, consumer and industrial IoT, I would like to invite Mr. Zaid Kidwai, representing Bora Blob. Good evening, everyone. There are about 80 million power drills being used an average of just 13 minutes in the entire lifetime. Do we really need to keep buying more? Hi, my name is Zed, and I'm the founder and CEO of Borrow Blob. Borrow Blob is an online P2P platform marketplace where users can rent or share your own stuff with others, your own items. Basically, this, this, this borrow blob came to me when I myself had, um, was in a situation where I required to, I required a car. I, I need to borrow a car and I didn't want to go to a rent a car because I didn't want to go through the hassle of the paperwork and, and the expenses of it. And um, I got to thinking that very night, I went to sleep with that thought and uh, fortunately in the morning, I needed a power drill. Uh, my mother wanted me to hang a, photo frame on the wall and then again it struck me that I have to ask somebody for this and there is no place that I can go and borrow a power drill just for the time being and that's how borrow blob was formed now not only does borrow blob help people with situations like mine but it also helps reduce heavy spending on barely used items. It helps increase utility of the items you already own. It helps save on storage space and the cost incurred because now people have to store extra items that they hoard at home in storage spaces. You don't have to do that anymore. You can rent your stuff out. And of course, by sharing, by sharing and renting items, you are helping reduce the carbon footprint, and the environmental impacts that are tied to production costs and, the, and, and productions of items. So, in, in, in two months of our beta testing, we have managed to gather 150 users in two months with about 50 plus items being rented. So that tells you that the need is present and it's of the moment. So today, I ask all of you, we need investment, we need, I urge you all to sign up for this change and to help spread the word. We also need um, hookups, we need, we need a connect with uh, insurance companies and of course, if we could also for our upcoming project, um, Road and Transport Authority. Somebody from the Road and Transport Authority. So, welcome to a world of robbers. Happy renting, everyone. Thank you, Zaid. Thank you. So, Zaid, how many people have actually signed up to your app? Within two months, we've gotten 150 users. And how many of them are actually, uh, you know, renting their See, items? We, we've got approximately 70 to 80 who are actively renting out their items. So. Can you tell everyone uh, in the room today, what is your strategy to increase awareness about your product? So how do you tell lots of people you know, about what you do? Safa, we believe in uh, the experiential word of mouth where we want users to use our service and experience the need and experience the change that we're trying to bring in this uh, economy where we have heavy burdens with financial pressures and storage pressures and you know, things that we need just for the moment, but we have to only buy. That's our only alternative. So, by just using this, people will understand. And I hope that they will be spreading this uh, by the word of mouth. Thank you very much, Zaid. Uh, for those of you who believe in Zaid's idea, please support him and get in touch with him after the event. Thank you. Thank you. Next participant from the same category, Come on up, Mr. Ayman Al Abid, representing Keshta App. Yes, all right. 
Honorable judges, esteemed guests, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ayman Abid, and I'm the CEO of CashTap. Allow me to kick, to kick this pitch with an example that happened to me a year ago. Simply, I wanted to throw a party to one of my friends, and I wanted this party to be as good as it can get. So in my mind, I had this party should have one or two swimming pools to have fun, a couple of rooms, and a playground for us guys to enjoy our time. To find such facility in Bahrain, what I did is I took my phone out and I started calling my friends to see if they know such facility in Bahrain. Going, I went to Instagram to search one, two, three facility, trying to find them with the right uh, mindset that I have of, of the party that I need. So it took me one hour to find the similar facilities and I started comparing their prices, facility, how do they look, look like, and I started making calls to check their prices and availability. All this hassle and headache, we want to save you from that. And in order to bring the value back in your time, we introduce to you Cash the App. Cash the App established in early 2018, and since then we have been growing massively, and our aim is to be the next Airbnb when it comes to booking chalets, resorts, private swimming pools and camps in the country, in the region, in the whole world. With our simple, unique application, you can do the process of booking in a couple of seconds. As simple as sweet this app sounds like, it carries a huge market on its back. In one year only, we managed to monitor and process $1.4 million in our system, and that's only in our first year. For our future plans, we aim to expand, as I said before. In two months from now, we're going to expand in Kuwait. We'll be 100% functioning there. And after Kuwait, we'll be moving to Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. So if you believe in Cash the App and if you believe in Bahrain startups, you can vote for us. And our ask is to have connections with uh, uh, current uh, base in Bahrain, hotels with resorts such as Four Seasons, Red Skeleton, and other big hotels as well. And we aim to, ha to have funding of 30 thousand PD, eighty thousand dollars approximately for marketing purposes for one year. If you can you think you can help us with that, please I'm all ears and I'm available. I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amen. Amen, you mentioned that you've been making good revenues as a startup. All right. Wonderful. Can you forecast how much would you be making for the next year? For the next year, uh, our forecast is to increase twenty percent in Bahrain and Kuwait. Uh, we have one point four for now. So our total GMV would be by next year like around three million three hundred thousand something dollars. Great. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, for for those of you who believe in Keshta app, please vote for him and support him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the third category, cybersecurity, data management, and analytics, I would like to invite Mr. Mirza Esrar Beige, representing CTM 360. Good evening. My name is Mirza Srar Beg. I am the CEO and founder of CTM360, a company of cybersecurity based inside Bahrain. In 2014, I discovered that majority of the security technology companies are focused in identifying and managing cyber attacks once the attacker has reached inside your network. That is late. It's like trying to tell somebody you should, you should dodge the bullet once it is right on your face. Sadly, there is now no cyber police who is patrolling the internet on your behalf. In the world of cyber, organizations are not really looking at 
early stage of the attack, when the attacker is profiling you, he is putting up a weapon, loading the ammunition, aiming at you and firing at you at, from the place and time of his choice. But that is very much possible to identify the attacks and that planning stage and disrupt the attacker. And that's exactly what we did. We built the technology to identify the data points which lets us know of the early stage of the attack, such as suspicious mobile apps, suspicious and fraudulent websites, suspicious impersonations, bogus email addresses, and so on. We can identify them, and not only identify, we can also have them shut down. This approach of ours has been accepted and validated by the number of customers that are growing along with us. We now have more than 100 customers who have subscribed to our security platform. This is already giving us a revenue of more than $3 million. We have already won multiple awards. Namely, we got Technology Company of the Year Award by Mead. We were also featured in Forrester Research Report for 2018 on digital risk management as one of the top 14 companies in the world. My ask is to His Royal Highness, Duke of York, to get me five of the UK banks to try out my platform. I already have 25 of the top 50 GCC banks and three central banks using it. Here it comes, a math question, and the student is terrified, nervous, sweating, thinking in his mind that he cannot answer this question because it is math, and math is difficult. Ladies and gentlemen, why we have so many people thinking math is difficult and boring? Why we have so many parents complaining in our local newspaper about how their kids are suffering with math? It shouldn't be that way. Learning math should be fun and enjoyable, and that's why we want to create Newton's Apple Learning Center. We want to make the journey of learning math an enjoyable journey for the students. Newton's Apple is where the students learn the mathematical concepts by listening to songs and watching fun animations and videos. Newton's Apple is where the students practice solving math questions by playing fun digital video games. Newton's Apple is where the students apply the mathematical concepts they learn by doing hands-on activities where they can touch and feel the importance of math in their daily life. Newton's Apple is where the students learn in a modern creative classroom structure, not the boring traditional classrooms that we've been using for more than a century. Newton's Apple is where your child will become so passionate about math. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a Newton's Apple. An interactive activity-based math center where we provide after school interactive math sessions for the students. So three weeks ago, we got the second place in Tamkim Mashru'i competition. Yes, out of 100 startup companies, we got the second place. But that was not our real victory. Our real victory was when a nine years old boy came with his dad to try our math games at the prototype exhibition. And when he tried them, that's what he said to his father. Dad, Dad, I really enjoy their math games. I want to go to their center to learn math. Please, Dad. That feeling of that kid is our real victory. And we are here today because we know in this prestigious audience, there could be someone who believe in what we believe, that children deserve that feeling of fun learning experience, and who would help us to get connected to one of the best interactive math experts in the UK, Mr. Andrew Jeffrey, who has been a leader in developing interactive curriculums in the UK. And also, 
in this prestigious audience, there could be potential investors, potential partners who would help us to raise that 50,000 BD to develop the interactive curriculum and make Newton's Apple a reality. So ladies and gentlemen, our ultimate goal is to make your child so passionate about learning. So if you believe that your child deserves a fun math learning experience, then help us make Newton's Apple a reality. A reality for your child, a reality for every child in this country, in this region, in this world. Thank you. Ali, thank you very much. I think your pitch just convinced me to send my child to come to you. Thank you. So, uh, Ali, um, I believe that in the lookbook, the lookbook has all the information about the participants. You mentioned that you need an investment of uh, 50,000 Bahraini dinars. 50,000. 50,000. Yes. So, today the room is filled with lots yes. of investors. Yes. And as you know, that investors are tough people to deal with. So, the first question they're going to ask you with is, how are you going to spend the 50,000 BD? Okay. So half of that 50,000 is actually going into developing the interactive curriculum. So basically, we'll be dealing, dealing with the programming companies to develop their digital games. We'll be dealing with media companies to develop the animations and videos. We'll be dealing with carpenters to develop the hands-on games. So majority of the fund is going into developing the interactive curriculum. Then the rest of it is going uh, Half of the rest of it is going into the interior design of the center. You know, we want the students to, to, ha to, we want to open the appetite of the students to teach. So we need to spend some money on the interior design of the center. And the rest of it is going into marketing and other things. Wonderful. Thank you very much and wishing you all the best of luck. Okay, thank you. Let's hear what the next participant within the same category has to say. My kindly invite Mr. Mohammed Ashur representing Spring Ring. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mohamed Ashour, and I'm the co-founder of Spring Ring, a school communication platform that not only connects people, namely school administrators, teachers, parents, and students, but also connects other educational technology platforms together. Our journey began while I was running a digital agency, and we got approached by multiple schools, whether in Bahrain or across the GCC, wanting to build custom digital products. But what we found out that a common theme that kept on popping up every time, that school communication was a frustrating problem for schools. Multiple schools uh, employed multiple uh, educational technology products, and that got not only parents frustrated with having to monitor all of them, but also got schools and teachers very frustrated in having to manage them. But it only really hit home when I became a parent myself. Both my children go to different schools, both myself and I and my wife are working parents. And what happened was we eventually got to a point where we had to manage multiple channels, having to monitor emails, paper slips sent home, and all sorts of other channels like WhatsApp and even social media for that matter that we had to just get in touch with just to know what's happening with our kids. So <clears throat> that then became personal to me. And we started developing this product, not as a school-wide communication platform and forgetting about the classroom, and not classroom-centric and forgetting about the wide needs of the school itself. So Spring Ring was born as an educational technology product, a school communication platform that allows parents, teachers, school administrators, and even students to communicate all in one encompassing product serving all sorts of media types. In the first two months of launching, beginning of this year, we've managed to raise almost $200,000 in seed funding and onboarded over 500 users. We've also managed to get in touch with many other schools that we're in touch with today. But we need to accelerate this growth, and that's why we're here today, to ask not only for funding needs and to build an advisory board of educators, but also to get in touch with GCC educational ministers to serve the public sector, and to also get in touch with the CEO of GEMS Education, one of the pioneers in private education in our region. The GCC 
ha will have next year 50,000 schools serving 15 million students. Let's sit, think about that and make Spring Ring the center of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Mohammed, I think one thing that you didn't touch base in your presentation and your pitch was the, uh, the market opportunity for your product within the region and globally. Globally, uh, the education expenditure is going to hit $5 trillion next year. And out of that, over $250 billion is earmarked towards educational technology products. Uh, and that's a growth of almost 17% year on year because the educational industry is only 2% digitized. And there's a huge gap to fill in that area. So thinking about the GCC, the GCC is one of the biggest uh, spenders on education, almost 15% on average in terms of their budget. So we see a big opportunity there. Thank you, Mohammed. Wishing you all You're the welcome. best of luck. Thank you very much. Next up, my kindly invite Ms. Amina Buchiri to talk about her business, TELP. Hi, my name is Amina Buchiri, founder and CEO of TELP, Tutor Help. As a university student, I was trained to teach. I was given the opportunity during a peer-to-peer -peer program to tutor students that were doing their master's degree, students that had visual impairment, and that experience was absolutely empowering. I became financially independent, but then at the same time, I was helping others, and I felt like I had a greater purpose. On the other end of the spectrum, the same program was solving a problem that over 50% of students face, and that is where and how to find private tutors that are at high quality, but at the same time at affordable rates. So I decided to take this model and replicate it and scale it to a bigger scale. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how TELP was born. We have built a criteria-based database portal that helps connect students with private tutors instantly, of which the majority of these private tutors are actually high-caliber university students and graduates that are able to take their knowledge and skills and turn it into a part-time tutoring career. It's very simple. Parents and students can go on the platform, check tutor profiles, read the reviews of other students that have booked with the tutor before, book their lesson directly through the tutor availability and calendar, and chat with the tutor, exchanging any required documents. During a very short period of time, we have been able to build a huge community, completing over 1,700 hours of tutoring. Cherry on top, the majority of our students are actually coming back to us, which means we have been able to retain our customers. We've also been partnering up with some of the top educational institutions in Bahrain and NGOs in order to further expand our educational community. We're currently raising $200,000, which is going to last us for the next 18 months, and is going to allow us to expand to two GCC countries, help over 20,000 students, and make jobs for over 2,000 tutors. Now, all of this would not have been possible without our amazing team. I come from a media background. I worked at three startups before deciding to start my own. I have a CELTA teaching certification, and I'm very passionate about education. The same can be said about our amazing team. Mahmoud al-Shahabi, our marketing outreach manager, has been a teacher for the past three years. Isra al-Sayyid, our customer service agent, has been a tutor for the past two years. And Khalid al with 10 years of software engineering experience, is very passionate about training other developers. If you guys need help, you know that we can help. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. So, Amina, you said that you want to expand. So, yes. if you could reach to one organization outside Bahrain, which organization would that be? Definitely the Ministries of Education in order to create jobs for university students and to be able to reach them and create jobs for the high caliber students. And that's way we're going to expand our educational community. Thank you very much and wishing you all the best of luck. Thank you so much. For the fifth category, Agriculture, Energy and Renewable Technology, I would like to invite Mr. Ali al mazal representing Windstorm. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ali Al Mizal, co founder of Windstorm. I am working in power plant. We are burning natural gas to produce electricity. And some of 
the plants burning oil. And some of them, they are burning coal to produce as well electricity. The result, the pollution result of this processes are NOx, SO2, sulfur dioxide, CO2, carbon dioxide, CO, carbon monoxide, which is affecting our environment badly. From here, we came out with this idea to use renewable resources to generate electricity. The idea is to generate electricity by the car movement on the road, by installing vertical wind access turbine on the side of the roads. Once the car passes, automatically the blades will rotate. This rotation will produce electricity. This electricity can be fed directly to a grid or can be stored in batteries to be used later for road lights, advertisement signs, or for any other load. As wind storm, we are seeking for aerodynamic specialist consultant to help us to build the first prototype in Bahrain. We are appreciating if the Minister of Ewa, Ta'arat al-Wazir, Abdel Hussein Mirza, can sponsor and support us to build this project in real life. Finally, we are looking for funds. I hope to see this project widely in GCC, not only GCC. I really hope to see it in the world wide. Ali Al Mazal, co founder of Windstorm. Thanks. Thank you, Ali. Thanks. Ali, so this is an idea on paper, and you yes. said that you need funding. So uh, it's not still in the paper, still, already we are building the 3D model. Uh, we are going with aerodynamic test. Uh, we are trying to get the best efficient utilize, utilizing the air can be generated from the cars. And how much, how much of time would you require to have your first workable model? Uh, I will say nine months if we get all the required support. Thank you very much and all Thanks the best of luck. A lot. For the sixth category, robotics, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, please join me in welcoming on stage Mr. Hamza Shaban representing Lara. Is there anyone here who missed someone and couldn't reach him? Is there anyone here? He is a long distance relationship. Anyone away from their family? Of course there are. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hamza Shaban and I'm a co-founder of Sustagaya Company. Sustagaya is a community of 2.4 million users in 100 countries. It all started with a guy who had a manhood problem and he was so shy for asking for professional help. So he created a Facebook, so he created a secret Facebook group to ask his close friends. This group became viral. This group became viral. And now the main concern of this group members nowadays is to change the world. We are presenting today, we are here today to present Lara, limitless augmented reality assistant that will take interaction between human and machine to a whole new level. Uh, imagine your, imagine your uh, mobile assistant in the image and voice of your beloved ones. And it's not only one assistant, you can have an unlimited number of assistants. With only a few pictures and voice notes of your beloved one, you can create any, any assistant that you would like. Our technology is revolutionizing the concept of mobile assistant applications. All mobile assistant applications nowadays our uh, all mobile assistant application nowadays are tough uh, with, uh, with their... <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Hamza. 
Hamza. Hamza, you're not done yet. I'm not going to let you go. Hamza. Hamza, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Can you please have you back on stage? Hamza, you have a very unique idea. So you're not, you're not actually addressing a problem, but he is actually introducing a new product in the market. So, Hamza, all these people here are actually here to support you. They are here to listen to what you have to say. So this is your opportunity. Tell them what is it that you would want from this room full of people with key stakeholders in it. What would you want from them? Okay. So our ask from uh, His Royal Highness and from the audience is an access to universities of London to get help from researchers and data, uh, and data scientists as well as to be able to use their equipment. We are also seeking for 100,000 investments in order to cover our uh, expense, our operating expense for a whole year. And the other question was? <laughs> That's it, so this is all what you require? Yeah, this is all what I'm requiring. Thank you very much. A big round of applause for Hamza. Please join me in welcoming on stage Mr. Shahid Zaki, representing Mavi VR Studio. Good evening, everyone. Allow me to start with asking you a question. Have you ever imagined your dream home inside your head and faced a difficult time translating that to your architect or designer? Great. I myself, as an architect, faced a very difficult time with clients going back and forth, trying to capture and implement their design vision. And there was a lot of time, effort, and money wasted. Yet, the final result does not always meet their expectations. My name is Shahid Zaki, and I am the co-founder and managing director of Mavi VR Studio. With Mavi, we bring you the solution. We work with architecture and construction firms into transforming a puzzling 2D drawing to an interactive, immersive VR experience, allowing you to live inside it, change and adjust the design the way you want to build your dream home. And also, we are a team of two, myself and Maya Ahmed, both experienced architects with a passion for VR and AR technology and the impact of them in this industry. We've completed so far six projects, and we also won the first prize in Startup Bahrain Weekend. And we're very lucky to be starting in the GCC market as this industry represents over $270 million, and we're targeting 3% of that. This is just the start. From transforming your dream home into a reality, Mavi aims to diversify into making the industrial workplace safer. We're going to achieve that by using VR and AR simulation to train the workers before they start work. That will help them enhance their skills and then work in a safer environment. We have different other services, from hologram technology and immersive cube technology all aim to transform your imagination into an interactive reality. Our ask is $100,000 to be invested in our equipment and our software. We also ask for introduction to architectural offices and real estate companies. Remember, all great projects start with your great ideas. With Mavi, we let you experience your great ideas before they're even built. Thank you. Thank you, Shahed. Shahed, you mentioned the architecture and the real estate uh, sector. Any other sector could, could actually benefit from this initiative? Yes. Our vision is actually we're going to implement this technology in education as well. So it can be used to teach on interior design, architecture, and different other subjects. Thank you, Shahed. Wishing you all the very best of luck. For the seventh category, consumer and industrial products and services, please join me in welcoming on stage Mr. Jafar al Hamid, representing iTedweer.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Jafar Al Hamad, and I'm the co founder of iTedWear. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say this we are causing a tremendous tragedy in terms of environment. In Bahrain, we are sending more than 1.6 million tons of waste each year to Asker landfill. Globally, a truck full of plastic goes to, the, goes to the ocean every single minute. So where is the issue? Why don't people recycle? After more than a year in research and development, we discovered that the solution is simply a proper connection between both the people and the recycling companies and factories. So what we did is simply develop a comprehensive, cloud-based, scalable solution that is available for the people and the recycling companies and factories. People will be able to send the request for the collection, along with lots of other models for handling waste, to the recycling companies and factories. On the other hand, recycling companies and factories will be using the system to efficiently and seamlessly manage their operations. So having that great system, how do we make sure that people will be using our system. So we did a step further. We designed a simple online form. We shared it over WhatsApp. And in just three days, we received more than 1,400 registrations and calls from people who are excited about the idea and the project. How do we make our money? We charge recycling companies and factories a monthly subscription fee, and as well a commission-based fee. Now that we have the knowledge and the momentum, we need your, vo your vote, ladies and gentlemen, most importantly, because that will make our access to the money that we need much, much faster. We need $160,000 that will enable us to hire the talented team and also get the right equipment and technology. Ladies and gentlemen, we need your support by also following us on Instagram and sharing this idea and this project if you see it, that it is going to make a difference. We also want to make a strategic connection with the government, namely His Excellency, the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Mr. Assam Khalaf. Ladies and gentlemen, join us to build the most comprehensive platform for recycling. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jafar. Jafar, very briefly, sure. look at the audience and tell me, convince them, why should they vote for you tonight? Uh, what we have done all the way right now without any funds. So we, have, we want to have a skin in the game and we want to operate to have, you know, to have this issue solved. We, in Bahrain, we are sending 1.6 million tons of waste each year to the landfill, and we are paying 18 million Bahraini dinars each year to the cleaning companies for them to do that service. We believe half of that amount could be saved if people adopt recycling. Thank you very much, Jafar. Wishing you all the very best of Thank luck. You very much. Last but not the least, with the final participant for tonight, I would like to invite Mr. Mohammed al Sadiq, representing Makani. Good evening, everyone. While I was looking for a co-working space in Bahrain, I noticed that available options are very limited, inflexible, and expensive. A monthly membership would cost up to $400 just for a specific limited location. My cheapest alternative was to go to a cafe nearby, buying a cup of coffee and sitting and working for as much as I wanted. I've noticed that many people around me are doing the exact same thing. So I asked myself the following question. Wouldn't we be great if the cost of a membership of a co-working space was equal to that to the price of a cup of coffee? And that was the start of the idea of Makani. My name is Mohammed al Sadiq, and I'm the co founder of Makani. Makani is a network of co working spaces across Bahrain 
that offers users places to meet, work, and innovate by partnering up with unique venues. We allow the user to find temporary and affordable working space through our user-friendly app. All he has to do is search through the list of available venues and select the desired location. And when he's done, check out of the space. It's that simple to use. Whenever a user chooses that specific location, he is guaranteed a working space, gets free coffee, free Wi-Fi, and also discounts on food and beverage items. We are targeting freelancers, entrepreneurs, students, young professionals, and also business travelers as our early adopters. When it comes to venues, we'd like to partner with cafes, incubators, accelerators, and business centers that are the perfect alternative to the traditional co-working model. We currently have 10 venues that are on board of the Makani network and offer up to 110 co-working spots. And by that, we're helping them increase the revenue, increase utilization of their space, and increase foot traffic. By the time we launch our app, we want to have between 15 and 20 venues. Our business model is very simple. We offer users daily, weekly, and monthly membership. We're currently in the final stages of developing our app, and we have 150 users who signed up on our website for early access. We are currently a team of four hardworking individuals, two co-founders, and for, as for our ask, it's as the follows. We seek $50,000 in seed funding to help us establish our business and hire a full IT team. And from the distinguished guest today, and from Tamkeen, we'd like to connect us to venues and businesses that could be part of the Makani network of spaces, and also to individuals within the Bahraini startup community, the vibrant growing community, to also be future users of our system. Thank you very much, and vote for us. Mohammed, thank you very much. Thank you. Mohammed, just one reason, one, uh, not a reason, sure. just tell me, what, you know, just one point as to how, what makes you different from the available co-working spaces, just one. Sure. A variety of spaces at the fraction of a cost of a current co-working space. Thank you very much, Mohammed, and all the best of luck for tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the most important segment of the event, which is to vote. To vote for your favorite idea. Just as a reminder, you can download the app, Pitch App Palace, from your App Store or Google Play. You can vote by signing into the app and then clicking on the Vote button. This will direct you to a page where you will be able to select three entrepreneurs. Instructions can be seen on the screen. Voting will close in three minutes. You may vote for up to three entrepreneurs each. And if you have difficulty uh, in terms of voting, please raise your hands and we'll make sure that someone from the team comes and assists you. So I encourage you to take this opportunity to please cast your vote as everyone's leaving today's event will definitely contribute in identifying top businesses and best ideas for supporting our future economy. Before announcing the winners, I would like to inform the participants that if your name is announced, can you please come on stage? Thank you.
request His Royal Highness the Duke of York to make the big announcement for the night. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I have um, the results of the voting. After, once the three minutes is up, it takes me a little bit of time to write the, write the things down, so I can't rush and be in two places at the same time. First of all, could I just say thank you to all our entrepreneurs for some outstanding um, uh, pitches, including that one which didn't quite go according to plan. And don't think... And don't think because things don't go according to plan, they don't get picked up. People's Choice Award is Lara. Congratulations. <laughs> we have a job tonight, and we have done it. We need to select six uh, entrepreneurs through uh, to the GCC um, final later in the year. So I'm going to tell you that in reverse order, Newton's Apple Math Center, <laughs> Mavy VR Studio, <laughs> Windstorm, <laughs> Dockware, and TELP. There were six named there because the people's choice goes through as well. So those are the six that will go through to the GCC uh, later in the, in the year. Now, I have made some notes uh, and I know that my team have made some notes uh, and every single one of you uh, there is something that we can, do, we individually, as in Pitchett Palace, can do for you, which we will follow up with. But I am almost certain that there is somebody, something else that somebody else in the room will be able to do for you. So thank you all very much indeed. Now, lastly, we could not do what we have been able to do for uh, Pitch in Bahrain without the support of Tam Keen. And I would just like to... <laughs> I would just like to say thank you to them uh, and their team, uh, led by Captain Trouble. Where is she? Hand up, Captain Trouble. There she is. Um, <laughs> because putting this event on Working with uh, Tam Keen is a great privilege and um, is something that we look forward to doing because we know that we are working together in order to have a positive outcome for businesses. And that's really all that we're about. So thank you all for coming this evening. Please now uh, network uh, with the entrepreneurs because I know that you uh, can make a difference to them um, from what they've said this evening. So thank you all very much indeed. Congratulations to our six that are going forward. And we'll see you later in the year. Thank you very much.